G'day everyone, welcome back to another video. Well, for those of you who have seen my previous videos, you'll know that a lot of the images that I've done uh, when it comes to narrowband imaging has been with the Optolong 2-inch 7 nanometer filters, which I was using with the Skywatcher Esprit and the ASI 2600mm Pro. And um, more recently, I bought some Antlia filters, the 3 nanometer ones, 2 inch again, and um, swapped those out from the, took out the Optolong ones and put the Antlias in to use with the Skywatcher and the 2600 MM Pro and uh, those Optolong 2 inch filters are sitting in another filter wheel at the moment waiting to decide for me to decide what kind of setup to use them with. But I have also been using the 7 nanometer Optolong um, narrowband filters with my Red Cat and the Mead 10 inch SCT. Uh, that is a 1.25 inch set of filters. And um, recently Optolong uh, reached out to me and said would you like to try some of our 3 nanometer um, narrowband filters that just I think came out this year and um, I guess they'd seen I've been using the 7 nanometer ones and thought I might like to try their 3 nanometer version um, which was a bit of a surprise to be honest with you. Um, so I said, uh, yeah, that would be, that would be great. And, uh, now they did send them out like two or three weeks ago, but I have been away and the weather's also been atrocious. So there's been no opportunity to use them, but, um, sure enough, they arrived. And, uh, in here, I'll hold these up the right way. You can see the HA, the S2 and the O3, three nanometer filters and these are two inch they asked me what filter wheel I had and I said it was a two inch my understanding if I'm correct is that they're only making two inch and the 36 millimeter ones but um, and they don't have any 1.25 inch ones at this stage I don't know if they've got plans to make them or not um, and I know there have been a few videos around already about these filters but um, yeah, I was really keen to to try them out and um, I thought it would be really good to compare them with the Antlias. Uh, since they're sort of similarish price range, I think I looked up a Gina Astro and uh, for a set of Antlia filters it's about $1,330. And these are the two inch ones by the way. And for a set of the Optolong ones, normally $1,239. So, you know, sort of 90 bucks or so, $91 cheaper. Um, but at the moment I understand they're doing a 20% off, so they're $991, so quite a bit, quite a significantly amount uh, cheaper. Um, but I don't know if that's going to last, how's that, till the August the 30th, so not for long. Um, so I thought it would be good to compare them with the Antlias. I mean, I think I have seen some people comparing with Astrodons and Chromas or whatever, but I, I think that's kind of... We know the Chrome and the Astrodon are a, a another step forward, both in, in the quality, but also in the price. I mean, a huge amount in the price. And um, whereas the Antlias are better compared, I think. And since I have those, uh, now two sets to compare, and I don't have Astrodon or Chromas, I've really got no choice in the matter. But um, I thought I would grab the filter wheel out of the observatory and take out the Antlia red, green, and blue filters and throw these in. Um, with the um, Antlia narrowband ones and if we get a clear sky at some stage it's not looking good for the next um, 10 days or at least but anyway I thought I could com I could image a target and I'd just be switching quickly between the different filters so that I'm actually doing you know imaging on the same night same target same temperature um, and seeing conditions and also um, roughly similar position in the sky to get a better comparison between the two of them. Now, um, I'll obviously give my opinion of them, but uh, full disclosure, when I got these sent out to me, I contacted Dr. Long and said, how long can I have them for before I have to send them back, um, assuming it was for a trial. And they very kindly and generously said, you can keep them. So... Um, I'll leave it to you to decide whether or not you think that's going to um, uh, affect my judgment on how these filters perform. I will um, try and be as honest as I can about them. Um, I have been a fan of the 7 nanometer narrowband ones. They've, they've worked well for me so far and I will continue to 
to use them and as I said have them in the other in the other um, uh, setup. Uh, yes, they the seven nanometer ones don't quite pick up as much as the three nanometer antlers. Yes, there is a little bit of halo issue with the seven nanometer ones, but it hasn't really sort of caused me much concern to be honest with you. Not compared to say the L Extreme and the Allen Hearts, which have quite big halos that can be quite hard to deal with. Um, so I'm I'm really excited to see how these perform. So I'll uh, get the filter well out of the observatory and um, load these in next to the antlers and if we get a clear sky I'll do a comparison of uh, how they perform. Okay so here are the filters in the filter well um, and so number one which is at the bottom there is the Optolog HA, number two is the S2 and number three is the O3 filter. Then I have the Antlia green uh, filter that's separating them. Oh, sorry, that's the blue filter. I've already had that mixed up once before. Um, so the Antlia blue is just separating them. And then we get to number five, which is the Antlia HA. Six is the Antlia O3. And seven is the S2. So you can see there's a bit of a difference in, uh, in colour, particularly between the the two um, filters when it comes to the O3. So as I said, number three is the Optimong O3 and number six is the Antlia O3. So um, I don't know if that's going to make any difference whatsoever to how they perform. Um, but anyway, they're in the filter wheel now and uh, we'll close it up and wait for a clear sky. Two days later. Okay, so um, Amazingly, we have a bit of a clear night tonight. I'm not sure how it's going to go. There are showers coming through, so I'm going to have to watch things very carefully. I've got the telescope pointing at the Prawn Nebula at the moment, and I'm going to try and um, image just a couple of subs on HA, a couple of S2, a couple of O3, and go through the two sets of filters that way. As you can see, we're um, pointing almost straight up, so we are so should be getting sort of the best Best position for uh, the filters and they should be pretty comparable um, as far as you know me imaging them in position in the sky the seeing should be the same uh, temperature etc so um, yeah hopefully it'll be a good uh, good comparison I might move on to another target see if I can find something with the old bright star because I'd like to see whether there's an issue with halos or not um, with the O3 so we'll see how we get on I, I know there's some clouds down um, to the south and I know they're sort of heading this way so fingers crossed they can get uh, through all the filters at least um, a couple of subs each you know, see how we get on okay so that's the S2 filter um, done you can see the guiding is good here at 0.36 I'm happy about that and again on the S2 here, now I haven't actually focused specifically for the S2 and the stars are looking pretty good. So um, the HA and the S2 must be pretty similar uh, focus wise. And we're now just on the O3. We're nearly through with the um, with the, H, with the O3, so let's just wait and see what this first O3 filter comes in at, and I'll be interested to see what the HFR looks like. And should appear any second now. There it is there. So, yeah, the HFR is pretty similar to the S2. Um, let's just zoom in here and have a look. I'm not sure whether that one is as focused so what I might do is I might just stop this and I might run an autofocus on it. Okay so we've uh, done the focus run as you can see here nice nice focus plot there and um, so I've just kicked off the second of the Optolong O3s uh, and we'll see how that compares with this HFR when it comes through. Alright so you can see that doing a um, a focus run certainly made a big change to the HFR of the stars so clearly I do have to run a focusing run through each of these um, so I might have to redo the S2 at some stage just to see what the story is. 
Okay, so we've been through the Meridian Flip. Um, so I'm looking across at the other screen, which is uh, over there. Um, and it's doing the focus run on the Antlia HA filter. Uh, I ran a uh, focus run on the S2 just before the Meridian Flip and did a, took an image. And it's basically come out the same way as these two here. That was the O3 that I'm discarding because once I did a new focus, the O3 was down here. But the S2 seems to be staying um, in a similar position, so um, I can keep those three. Okay, so that's the first HA through on the Antlia filter. Um, you can see the HFR kind of similarish between the Optolong 3 nanometer and the Antlia one. The Antlia one just a, a little bit um, lower. If we just zip back and see if I can compare, I'll just click on, um, say, this one. Of course, flip the other way around. I'll have to compare them more uh, once I uh, once I get them into Pixon's site, but um, it'll be good to have a comparison to see if one's picking up more than the other. Um, so this set has just passed uh, Meridian Flip, and the other set was just before Meridian Flip. So that's 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 pretty even, I think. Right, so this was a lot harder than I realised to um, actually have a fair playing field um, when doing these images. And I think I've, I've realised that you've got to be very cautious when you are um, doing these comparison videos and when you are actually looking at these comparison videos because there are lots of little things that sound like are being controlled for, um, but you know there's a lot going on that can't be controlled for or that people think, can, forget about. Um, so, for example, I thought, okay, I'm going to put the same filters in the same filter wheel. I'll be using the same camera, same telescope, same night. I'll image something that is, you know, pretty close to Meridian Flip. So uh, that way they'll be in a very similar place in the sky, if you like, as far as optimum imaging is concerned. And all that seemed to be all good and everything. But I realized that as I was going along, there were differences. So for example, some images, the guiding was about 0.5, which normally would be great. The error would be 0.5, but there are others that were 0.3. And I think they can produce subtle changes when you're pixel peeping. Um, sure, if there's a big difference between the equipment you're using, then maybe that doesn't play such a big role. But when there are subtle differences in your pixel peeping, trying to find out, are these stars a little bit tighter? Is this faint nebulosity detail a little bit better in this one versus the other that a you know guiding of 0.5 versus 0.3 can make a difference um, and even though I was imaging what I configured to be well into astronomical nighttime because it is winter here at the moment um, imaging at nine o'clock versus imaging at 11 o'clock there are differences going on there's more um, lights going off in the houses around so there's probably a little bit less light pollution. It's winter here so there's a lot of heating going on so maybe some open fires, gas fires are being turned off around about you know 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock, midnight. Um, so those uh, times you're imaging earlier in the night might have a bit more atmospheric distur disturbance compared to ones later in the night and again that can affect your your images. So there are a lot of things going on here that I think, um, you know, can suddenly make differences that you don't realize you're not controlling for. And although I was sort of running through and trying to image things fairly quickly, do a couple of one filter, next filter, next filter like that, and then move on to the other set of filters, you know, that can take time in over two hours conditions are actually still changing. And it's very easy to um, come to a conclusion that you kind of want to be the case, for example. So um, yeah, I think you've got to be careful with these comparison videos and by all means be very careful about my comparison video. I am doing one night. I am doing a small amount of data. So I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to see initially are there gross differences going on here um, between these two filters. Okay, so let's have a look at the images. Now, these are five minute exposures. Um, they've had nothing done to them. Uh, there's been no calibration, uh, no nothing. They're just the raw, raw um, data. All I've done is hit the little nuclear button here and give them a stretch. 
and that's basically it. On this side we have the Optolon ones labelled OP, HA and on this one the Atlia ones which are just HA. First look, very hard to see any difference between these two, um, very very similar. Uh, if I zoom into this area over here and let's just uh, come over here maybe we'll just zoom in a little bit, oh it's a bit far but we'll zoom in yeah, to this, to this point here try and even them up as easy as possible evenly as possible so this sort of detail that we can see here I can see it pretty well here this little guy over here with his two little eyes this little alien fella um, somewhat similar there might be a tiny bit of increased um, contrast here between light and dark compared to this one we've got little fine nebulosity here so we've got that little bit there you can see that over here um, again you know the differences are pretty subtle um, let's go over to this area here where we've got a little bit of finer um, dark nebulosity so we can see them both in here uh, and which is better maybe this one has a little bit more contrast this might have a subtle bit more contrast but you know, we still got. You can see that sort of detail, the little lines through there and there, these little areas. It's pretty subtle, I have to say. Um, is there a gross difference between these two? No, there's not. Uh, and are the subtle differences a truly a reflection of the filter, or a reflection of the time they were taken? I, I don't know. Here's the S2 again. Very, very little difference that I can see. Um, Let's just zoom in here. Again, we've got this sort of detail running down here. Uh, there's a little guy there. You can see him over here. You can see a bit of the arm that we saw here before, that little structure that was over here. Um, stars. Let's have a look at these, this group of stars. Where are we? Here we go. These ones. And let's zoom over to here. So def defining the stars. Again, you know, there's one, two, three, four stars. There's a little one, a big one, and, you know, the definition of the stars is very, very similar. Um, let's move down to this area here and have a look at this. Just zoom in a bit there, and we'll just... Again, you know, there's all this little fine detail that seems to be present in both very hard to say which is better versus the other to be honest with you I, I am struggling to see see a difference I have noticed on this on this um, monitor and I don't know whether this will come through on YouTube but although I'm looking straight onto it um, images over here seem to uh, the background seems to be darker than an image over here where it seems to be lighter I don't know if it'll show through if I switch these over like this uh, suddenly the background over here seems a bit darker than this one over here but um, that's just for my eyes I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see that but uh, that's something I've noticed when it comes to trying to decide whether the background is a little darker between one or the other otherwise very very similar star definition looks very good um, nebulosity definition looks really good uh, no gross differences there the O3 I'll just zoom out here again very very similar um, let's just zoom in and have a look at say that little group of stars here with the O3 and uh, the Optolong on the side and the Antler over here you know one two three four one two three four you can see the little star there so again very similar um, now let's just come down to an area because this is very vague nebulosity let's just move down to this area here oh sorry it's maneuvering around gotta get remember with the mouse to get it move the wheel the right way and uh, so comparison for these little subtle differences in here you know pretty hard to see a difference in here uh, these were taken actually I think at a similar time so this was taken oh this is actually after midnight so this is 20 to 1 in the morning and this is 5 past 9 at night so you know this is well into darkness 
Um, and these are both, I should say, no moon was up at this time. So uh, that was good. I made sure I imaged without the moon. Um, so again, you know, quite a lot difference. This was done a lot later than this one, but very, very similar results. So, you know, I can't see a huge difference between these two. Now, when I talked about you've got to be very careful about when you're looking at the images and, and that there can be differences even within a filter. And if you're not careful, um, you might be fooled into thinking one is doing better than another than the other because you've got some some dud images with one filter versus the other. So let's just pull up this Optolong filter here and this one here. And so this one here was done at uh, 8.43. And this one was done at 10.49. Now, both well into astronomical darkness, but clearly a difference in the amount of information getting there. You know, this one has a lot more data, a lot more detail compared to, to this one here. Now, I don't know necessarily why there were quite a big difference between these two. Um, it may be that there was a very small cloud went through during the imaging that just affected the amount of data coming through that I couldn't detect. Um, because, you know, to my eyes, the sky looked clear. This is the trouble. Is these are the sorts of things you've got to be very careful with when you're doing these comparison videos because there are going to be little subtle things going on that can make big differences to what you get with your with your image. So if we just come down to this area here of um, nebulosity that I showed you before comparing the two filters, you know, there's a lot of more, lot more information here than here. Um, again, because something's happened here where we haven't got as much of the, the light getting to it. Um, again, be careful when you're trying to compare stars, because if we were to look at, if I was to, you know, start to look at stars just by themselves, they go, oh, look, these stars are a lot tighter. There's good definition between these two. There's a, there's a small light star there and a big star there. And here, they're much similar in size and they're a bit blurred between them. And that's really just a reflection, not because the of the way the filter is necessarily dealing with the light, because these are exactly the same filter. It's just the amount of light getting through because something has affected the sub um, and given it less light, but makes the stars look tighter and, you know, better. So, you know, there's a lot of things you've got to be um, bear in mind when you're looking at comparison um, videos. For me, what is my take home from this? I am not, it, I'm not seeing a, a big difference between these filters. I'm, I'm, you know, there's a subtle difference. Well, if there are, in some of them, there's no, I can't see any difference. And maybe in the odd one in the HA, there's very, very subtle differences. But are they related to some um, factors that were going on in the sky that I couldn't tell? A very little, little small cloud came past or whatever. I don't know because I can't tell. But I'm not seeing gross differences between these two. So I sort of feel on my very small sample of one night. Um, with two hours of data that um, these two sets of filters are producing fairly similar results. Um, now, look, you know, you may get differences in sets of filters being sent. We know that people get differences in batches of filters and equipment that comes out. You know, some person gets one telescope with beautiful stars corner to corner and somebody else gets the same telescope and there's elongated stars in the corners. Um, you know, different filters are known to get different results. So, you know, one person may get a not a good batch compared to another. I mean, that happens. That's hard to control for. But um, at least of the two batches that I've got of these two sets, I am not seeing a gross difference um, on one night of imaging. Am I going to do a whole lot more comparison um, images? I'm not because um, I think there's enough here to tell me I'm not going to see a huge difference. Uh, but I don't want to spend all my time just you know, comparing subtle differences and filters. I want to image, I want to do some targets. And I feel that um, I'm going to get good images from both of these sets of filters. One thing that would have been nice to be able to spend a bit more time on, and unfortunately I'm not going to, um, and well, I couldn't that night. And I tried the next night to image for a set, perhaps a brighter star. You know, I could shoot at Allen Attack, but Let's face it, I mean, you know, a lot of filters get get um, uh, halos with Alnatec because it's just ridiculously bright. So I'm more interested in, you know, am I going to have halos I have to deal with with 
a lot of the other nebulas that I'm dealing with, not just because I'm ha happen to go for the you know the horse head, etc. So what I did was the next night, and unfortunately clouds came in <clears throat> and ruined the party. So this is the running chicken nebula. <coughs> Excuse me. And this, as far as I can tell, is a roughly magnitude um, three star. So re relatively bright. Um, and I know that things like Ellen Hart's filter, Alex Stream filter, I was getting really harsh halos around stars that were nowhere near as bright as this. Um, and so this is an Optolong. So we, we've got an image here. It's not bad. You can see the Bok globules in here. So they're, they're, at least it's relatively clear. Um, it's a five minute sub. And uh, this is the star. Sure, there's a little bit of brightness around here. Um, is it a halo? It's just a little bit of extra brightness around it. I see that on bright stars on, on my other filters as well. So, you know, I'm not seeing those harsh um, halos, but then again, this is a single sub. Um, I haven't stacked a whole lot of subs. So, and unfortunately our weather has um, turned to custard and there doesn't, we, we've basically got a run of bad weather coming for the next at least couple of weeks and I'm not sure that I'm going to get to um, image again but it will be something I'll be looking at later on and you know if I do find that um, I'm getting problems with halos with these I will certainly um, try and put out a video to let you know about that but um, I'm certainly not seeing anything disturbing um, straight off on these which again is a good thing so um, yeah, as I said, my take home, at least for me, on my very limited sample of one night of imaging of two hours um, only, um, is that there's not a huge difference between these these two filter sets of filters. And um, I am looking forward to imaging with both of them. Um, and that's probably going to be my focus now. We'll be just not necessarily trying to do comparisons because you know, can end up not imaging targets because you're too busy doing these comparisons with pixel peeping but um, yeah I haven't found a huge difference between the two of them so um, by all means um, you know you've seen what's on the screen I'm sure that there'll be people looking at them and making up their own minds about what they think is better or worse um, there'll be people have different um, get different mileage out of their sets of filters there'll be different people who are making different conclusions um, based on the sets of filters they've got or even, you know, the data they happen to collect that night. Um, you know, I'm just not seeing a huge difference. Anyway, look, I hope you have found this um, interesting, if nothing else. Um, and uh, look, if you are enjoying the videos I'm doing, if you enjoyed this video, you know, hit the like button. Um, please comment below about what you think, um, whether you think that you, you can see some definite dif differences in there. I know there are a lot of things that people are going to come up with, like where you should really stack a whole set of images and etc, etc. But there are just so many variables um, to try and control. It is really difficult. And unless you're finding gross differences, I think a lot of those little subtle differences you find in pixel peeping can just be due to a little difference in the guiding, a little difference in the sky clarity, that moment, um, a little bit difference in the light pollution or the atmospheric disturbance, you know. So um, yeah, I am hoping next to be able to put out some images when we get some clear sky, whenever that may be, um, with both these Optolong and Antlia filters. And until then, um, I hope you get more clear skies than I'm getting at the moment. <laughs> anyway, we'll see you in the next video.